Hello, friends. Happy Stratterday. Cyberry here with another Darkest Dungeon How to Use guide. Uh, quickly before I begin today, thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and share this guide with a friend. All of this is helping immensely, and we are almost to our my my first goal of 500 subs, which honestly is f***ing amazing. I never really would have thought that there were that many people who would actually give a sh about what I think about these wonderful mod classes. Um, but I'm continually surprised every day. Uh, so thank you for supporting me in that way, and I. I hope that continually making these videos is gonna eventually, you know, make up for that gesture of goodwill. But anyway, uh, let's get down to business. Today we are gonna take a deep dive into how to play the Saw Hunter. The Saw Hunter came out really recently. I usually wait a little bit um, before I dive into covering a class, but uh, I just kind of love the playstyle of this guy and uh, kind of excited to get the video out there. Um, there is no canon name that I know of for the Saw Hunter. The credits, though, uh, Crispy did the animations, the sound, and the coding. Boldus did the trinkets and coding. And Duminator also did some trinkets. Let's just dive straight into the base stats. Uh, the max HP of the Saw Hunter starts at 20, and it will be a 36 at max resolve. Uh, this is going to go up by 4 at each level. This is, I would consider this below average for the HP stat. Uh, this is the same kind of HP mark as a Shield Breaker or a Grave Robber. So there's a little bit of a fragility in there, but overall, um, it's not really a cause for concern. He's got a high enough dodge and you can stack the dodge beyond that. Uh, not really a concern in my book. Uh, speaking of, the dodge starts at a 10 and it'll progress to a 30 at max resolve. This is the above average track, uh, same as the Highwayman, uh, Grave Robber, Hellion. Uh, so, the, so the good dodging classes aside from Jester all share this same dodge track. The prot is exactly what you would expect, 0%, uh, nothing to see here. The Saw Hunter's speed starts out at a 7, and it will progress to an 8 at third resolve, and a 9 at max resolve. Um, so this is a rather fast speed track here. I, I consider it uh, between good and great, if you really want to label them like that. Um, it's the same as Plague Doctor or Jester. Um, I believe Abomination has the same speed. Um, so you're going to get first turns a lot. Um, and if that, if you want to mess around with that, keep in mind, uh, I have a video, a guide on how to uh, speed fix your, your teams. If you want him to go first or second, or you want to plan that kind of strategy, um, it's immensely helpful. Other than that, the accuracy mod. The accuracy mod is exactly what you would expect out of it. Plus zero. Uh, nothing to see here either. The crit of the Saw Hunter is a 6% at first resolve, and it will go all the way to a 10 at max resolve. Um, this is top of the line. This is the same crit as an Arbalist or a Grave Robber, and they f***ing crit all the time. So um, prepare yourselves for critting things left and right. And finally, we are at the damage stat. It is a 5 to 10 at opening resolve, uh, and it will progress to a 9 to 16 at the final resolve. This is um, this is good frontline damage. I consider this above average frontline damage because it's the same track as the Highwayman. Uh, it's very close to uh, like a Shield Breaker or a Bounty Hunter. Those are kind of on either side damage-wise of this. But overall, you're going to put a lot of damage out, and if you are um, putting your party together in the right way, he's got a lot of utility to uh, maximize his damage potential. In my view, that is his purpose in combat. So let's just start looking at his combat skills. Uh, the first of which is Bloodletting Teeth. Bloodletting Teeth is usable from rank 1, 2, or 3, and can target rank 1 or 2 opponents. It's a melee attack with an accuracy base of 90, it does full damage, and has a crit mod of plus 7%. Um, 
And yes, plus 7% on this move and plus 6% on himself. Uh, this is going to crit a ton. Um, and it's going to cause bleed with 100% base. And it starts out at a one point a round for three rounds bleed. That does grow. It'll grow to a three points a round for three rounds and the normal maximum of 140% base. So you're going to set bleeds pretty often with this. This is not a move I recommend to try and combo with the next one we're going to go over just because of uh, the reach and the range requirements. But that move is Into the Wound. It is also usable for rank 1, 2, or 3, but it can target rank 2, 3, or 4 opponents with an accuracy base of 90 and a damage modifier of negative 15% and a crit modifier of 7%. This will do an additional 25% damage versus bleeding foes. Um, that 25% is going to grow to a 50% at max resolve. Um, so you can already tell with this move, you've got excellent reach and you were going to get like a snowballing return based on what level you are. If you are high level, you're going to be getting a lot more out of this move than the previous. Especially if they're bleeding. If you if you plan accordingly and you hit bleeding targets, this is going to eviscerate people. Um, and it's also got that same really high crit mod. The reason I say you don't try and stack these together necessarily or use them in a combo style way is just because of what targets they can hit. There's only one target they share in common, so unless you're moving parties around, it's not going to help you at all. And plus, there are, you know, three other spots in your party, um, one of which you can just set a lead setter in that roster spot and uh, just follow up with Into the Wound. The third combat skill is Heckling Gunshot. It is easy from rank 1 or 2, and can target ranks 2, 3, or 4 on the opposing side. This is a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 95 and a damage modifier of negative 75%. This does not have a crit mod, so it's going to leave that 6% crit alone. This will pull the target to squares with 100% base and debuff that target minus 10 dodge with that same 100% base. Um, so this is not a bad way to um, bring backliners into the front. Um, and maybe it, those pesky, dodgy ones, this is not bad to debuff that as well. Um, this is not necessarily the best damage dealing move, and the single target is really good if you are pinpointing uh, problems in the back ranks. But overall, this isn't going to kill it by itself. You better have a follow-up. Fourth ability is Serrated Knife. It's usable for rank 2, 3, or 4 and targets both rank 3 and 4 opponents. This is a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 85, a damage mod of negative 66%, and a crit mod of negative 5%. Um, that crit is fairly common um, for a AoE attack, and as this hits both back ranks, that's kind of uh, what, you're, what you're cut out for here. This is going to inflict bleed with a higher 110% base at 2 points a round for 3 rounds. This is a much more improved bleed from Bloodletting Teeth, and even at high level, um, it's going to go to four points around and still have 150% base rather than 140. This is also going to buff himself to get 4% more crit, and I believe, I don't use this a ton, but I believe that buff is your typical uh, three rounds, uh, which is pretty nice, actually. It's going to last through the battle without much issue, and uh, that's really all you can ask for. The fifth ability is Visceral Attack. It is useful from rank 1 or 2, and can target rank 1, 2, or 3 opponents. It's a melee attack with an accuracy base of 95, a crit mod of 8%, and it does full damage. This is Armor Piercing, so it's going to bypass all prot, and this will inflict knockback on the enemy for 2 ranks at 100% base. This is going to clear stun on that opponent, but the target must be stunned for this attack to be selectable, and it will do a bonus 100% damage from versus stunned foes. 
Um, so this move is very much living up to the name of the Visceral, and I like that it is a entirely different build and brand than the Visceral built by um, the Powder Keg and the Choir Hunter. They have different versions of Visceral that are both entirely representative of Bloodborne, and I, uh, I love it. So it's a different view on that same thing. Um, it's nice that, that these creators get granted us eyes in such different ways. Um, but yeah, this is a good move. I frequently run out with it. The sixth is Hunter's Salutation. It is usable from rank 1, 2, 3, or 4. It's one of the few moves he can use from the back. And it is a self-buff and self-setup move. It's going to increase the dodge of the Saw Hunter for a couple rounds, plus 10 dodge at this level. It's going to mark himself as a target, activate Repost, and that Repost will be a 90 accuracy Repost with minus 90% damage. So it's not going to do a ton of damage. The point of this Repost is to have that stun effect, this stun of 70% base. Um, so now th this is typically about 30% base stun effect less th than a move you would like to set stun with. However, there are ways to uh, ramp that up, or maximize that, or get the most out of a repost stun, which is already, um, honestly, I think this is balanced really well. Uh, somewhere around the 65%, 70% base is uh, what I feel uh, potent enough, but not overpowered. And the final combat skill here is Augur of Ebrietes, which I probably butchered the name of. I apologize. Um, it is usable from rank 1, 2, or 3, and can target rank 1, 2, or 3 opponents. It's a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 85, a damage mod of negative 95%, and no crit modifications. This will stun the target for 110% base. It will reduce your torch by 5, and it will debuff that target minus 4 speed while it is stunned. Uh, and that debuff is going to stick. It has a 300% base. It's very common you're going to you're hit with that, even if the stun fails, uh, which is honestly not bad. Alright, let's go real quick through the camping skills as well while we're at it. Um, he's going to have the generic Encourage, Wound Care, and Pep Talk, as you would expect from most of these classes. Uh, but the first unique camping skill is Sanguinary Consultation. It is a time cost 3 camping skill that will target himself. It's going to prevent Nighttime Ambush, which you're already getting uh, at a real good cost in the time cost 3. But you also get some other benefits. You're going to have a minus 20% chance that the party is surprised for the next 4 battles. Which is a big bonus, especially in the dark and a bonus of 20% chance that the monsters are surprised for four battles. Uh, this does come at a cost, as all your companions are going to take 15 stress damage. So this is, um, this is an interesting one, and I do like it, um, especially in parties with uh, uh, hunter parties, because it is a rather cheap prevent nighttime ambush that gives other fringe benefits that not a lot of camping skills post. The second unique camping skill is Gain Insight. It is also time cost 3, and this targets the whole party. They are going to ignore stealth until the next time you camp, but they are all going to take 10 stress damage in return. So this one is going to be less impactful as far as stress damage on all of the party, including the Saw Hunter, uh, but you are going to see all the things that you shouldn't see, and that is quite the weighty benefit, especially as you're getting to higher level dungeons, you're going to run into more of those holes that like to start stealthed, and nothing feels better than to hit them anyway. The third unique camping skill is a Yarnum Spar. It's a time cost 4, and you are going to select an ally, um, and this is going to boost him and that ally as they spar while they rest. Um, the Saw Hunter themselves is going to gain 5% crit for 4 battles, 10% or plus 10 dodge for 4 battles. They're going to suffer 10% HP damage from sparring. The Companion is also going to gain that 5% crit 
they're going to gain 10 accuracy and suffer 10% HP damage of their own. So this is kind of a, a fun little party buff kind of thing. If you've got two real attacking units in your party, this is not a bad way to spend four points. Um, but I would not be surprised if there are more useful things in your camping skills of your your communal party. Uh, but this, if, if all else fails, this is uh, not a bad way to buff yourselves through the rest of the dungeon. And the final camping skill is Bloodied Resupply. It is a time cost 3 ability. You're going to target yourself, and it's going to change some things about how you fight and some of your moves specifically. It's going to add 10% to your stun skill chance for 4 battles. Your riposte is going to have plus 10 accuracy for 4 battles. Heckling Gunshot and Augur of Ibriatus are also going to have 10 more accuracy for the next 4 battles. And in exchange, you're going to suffer 20% HP damage. Um, so this kind of, uh, it, it powers up his riposte, and it's going to make all of his ranged attacks um, a little more versatile and useful. Aside from uh, the knife throw, is the only one that is not directly buffed. Uh, so it's actually kind of a fun way to give his ranged attacks a little bit of a leg up on the competition. So briefly, uh, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, uh, we should discuss his crit effect. It's gonna buff his dodge. So this is why I say I'm not too concerned about his low HP, uh, because he's got a really high crit and a pretty high dodge. So the more he crits, the more he's gonna boost that dodge and pretty much get missed by incoming attacks. Um, and honestly, I feel like that's a good balancing point. Uh, just make sure, just in case, that you've got a decent healer waiting in the wings. Let's see, as far as party compositions go, um, there are a lot of parties that work well with him. Uh, he loves bleed comps, um, he loves people who throw out stuns like candy, um, and he, overall, as long as you're putting him in a party where they need a damage dealer, um, he's gonna thrive. He's gonna do well in that kind of a party. Um, but if we're being frank here, uh, just put him a hunter party, man. I mean, a fucking hunter party. Are you serious? Choir hunter, powder keg, fill that fourth rank with, uh, I don't know, whether you want a healer, whether you want a stress healer, whether you want someone laying down stunts. Uh, plenty of options for that fourth slot, temporarily, because I hear there's another hunter on the way. Otherwise, let's see, uh, quirks, let's go into that real quick. Um, he has a unique quirk, the Hunter's Illness. In the early stages, it used to be a disease. You may have noticed it switched over to Hunter's Illness up here on the quirks. It's going to make you immune to the Crimson Curse, and it has a lot of flavor text here. Though the Hunter carries themselves with the strength and agility of a beast, they have mastered the Scourge, retaining their humanity and resisting the call of blood-fueled cravings. Now, being immune to the Crimson Curse is going to make the Saw Hunter vastly more reliable. Uh, you're not going to have to worry um, about him contracting that shit, their life being threatened by the Crimson Curse in late stages, or just their predictability in combat. As long as you keep him unafflicted, um, you're going to get a very, very uh, reliable hero. So, I think the only thing left, aside from just taking him out for a spin, um, is actually just going to be some trinkets. Um, I do not have a lot of them. This is a really new mod compared to when I'm putting this video out. Um, but I have a few, and it'll have to do for now. Um, he does have Sunward Isle trinket and uh, uh, Color of Madness trinket. Uh, but we'll start here with the old Hunter Bone. This is the very rare trinket, and it's going to give you 10 dodge and 2 speed, which are pretty good together, um, and it's going to come at the cost of 20% move resistance and 20% bleed resistance. Uh, so having a very defensive trinket like this not cost additional stress damage is actually pretty impressive. Um, 
10 dodge is actually a pretty formidable boost. I like to aim for around uh, 12 to 15 if I can, additionally on people, but he's already got a pretty high dodge. I think this will do. Two speed, he's already got great speed, so he'll appreciate that as well. The rare trinket that we're looking at here is the monocular. It's going to add 5 accuracy if the torch is above 51. Bonus 5% crit if torch is above 75. And it's going to inflict 20% more stress on you if the torch is below 50. So, if you're equipping this trinket, uh, you're going to get some pretty good shit at high light levels, uh, but you really do not want to be in the dark. Because you're not going to get your bonuses and you're going to be punished during that time. So overall, if you're going out on light runs, this is not a bad second trinket, um, especially if you don't really care about boosting the damage or maybe the dodge. Uh, this is not a bad one to put on. And the third trinket that I have here is the Hand Lantern. It's the uncommon trinket. It's going to give 10% scouting chance and a minus 10% chance that the party is surprised. This has uh, some good synergy with that camping move. Sanguinary Consultation. And so, as such, it is going to be uh, pretty functional, I think. Other than that, um, I did kind of breeze through one of the quirks, but I didn't really highlight what I would lock. Uh, excuse me, I'm a little out of sorts this morning. Um, I would lock dodge quirks, to be fair. Um, I think he's best served with dodge quirks, whether you're going to use him in attacking mode, he's going to survive ability that way, or if you're going to set up a repost with Hunter's Salutation, um, he would also appreciate dodge quirks. Uh, so dodge is probably the thing I would prioritize, so things like Luminous would be very good to lock, or Corvid's Grace, if you can get it to land on him. Otherwise, um, well, you can maximize his crit in whatever way works best for you. If you're going to use a lot of ranged attacks, uh, focus on Eagle Eye. If you're going to use a lot of melee attacks, uh, the name escapes me. <laughs> Precise Striker, I think. Uh, but it's a very good quirk in that case. And if all else fails, just kind of lock a damage quirk on him and you'll probably be fine with that. On uh, mine, I have Hard Skinned, uh, mainly because I really like hard skinned, and when it lands, I kind of want to keep it. But overall, I would not be surprised if I removed this if something better replaced it. So, as is, I've got a party here that I think is going to do okay, and I think I decided. Um, here. I would like to go here because uh, there's, I can never have too many tough rings. Uh, but I'm not going to make the same mistake that I made before in a god video and go with a bleed comp in the ruins. I'm not doing it. Uh, so we're going to go out with this comp in the wield. The whole premise behind here is I've got Dwayne <laughs> the Rock. I love it. I've got Dwayne on him in case I resort to his repost move and trying to stun that way, which should help a ton. But overall, the point of the Saw Hunter here in this party is to just deliver damage um, on either stunned opponents or bleeding opponents and prioritize them in that way. So let's try this party out and see what we can do. Uh, I do need some of these, I think. Corruption has soaked the soil. Sapping all good life from these groves. Okay, they put me Let at the end. Let us burn out this nice evil. Them. Okay, we're gonna run through this shit. We're gonna loot this. Fun, fun, fun. Let's show off your sprites. I don't have a looter in my party, so I'm not losing anything by looting to the Saw spreading Hunter. corruption. Here comes combat. With misintent. Also, you see how fucking long his gun is? My god, it's as long as a human's leg. He's ready for war. Okay, so let's see if I can nail a stun down. Okay, I've got a good target. Um, 
we are gonna do this. Normally, uncertainty. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna lay down some bleed on everybody because of the trinkets I got on. And that should uh, help round two and three give him some good damage. Normally, with the visceral, especially with the powder keg, I would prioritize this stress guy right here. Um, however, this one is full armor piercing. I'm gonna go through this 50% broad fungal claw and just rip him in half. As the fiend falls, and nothing feels blossoms. better than ripping through 50% broad for a one-hit KO. And technically, it wasn't a one-hit KO, but it's pretty damn close. All right, so stunned. Let's hit him with this. Masterfully executed. This motherfucker's dead. He's not gonna turn. So now I just gotta finish this guy off. All right, I'm gonna land a stun on you now that you've taken your turn and you got rid of that buff. Great is the Normally I would follow up with own. another visceral because I absolutely love it and it has great animation. But we are going to uh, instead show off the other moves. Uh, Bloodletting teeth. We did not get the bleed, unfortunately. Hit you with that deliberate bleed on you. So I can follow up with the other one. Got hit. It's over, folks. Sorry. Pack it in. I can't believe they hit me. Okay, we're gonna do this. Didn't really need it, but uh, it's helpful. All right. Well. Here it goes, into the wound. It's gonna do bonus damage for bleeding, plus 50% damage. And I honestly expect a crit. Their I did not get the crit, it's unfortunate. Maintain the offensive. These nightmarish All right. creatures can be felled. We've shown they three of the four beaten. we have selected here. Let's try and mix it up um, and get everything else in. I don't know that everything literally will be popping, but uh, we'll see. But you know what? We've got two more battles. I'm keeping this roll on because why the hell not? Okay, 10, 8, 8. Yeah, you're the you're the guy. You're the trap guy. You're the dude. Okay, let's douse. Taros may indeed stalk these shadows, but yonder. Normally, I'd be cool with gold. not doing this stuff uh, on this kind of video. Just make a guide, but um, it's a linear map, and I really don't want to backtrack all through here and waste my food. Son of a bitch! Uh, I I'm going back to that. Sorry, guys. I'm going back to that. Because any of these mods that I have in there could have installed anything new, the so there could be a head trick Otherwise, it's really not that. And boogeyman. I don't need money. Yeah, it's just money. God damn it. All right. Onward. Looks like my two battles will be in this hall here. So I can just... I'm fine with backtracking this hall. Let's just pass everything. Normally, they don't make me go half the goddamn dungeon just to find three battles. You know? I did not light up. Oh well. We're fine with it. I'm gonna light you. A singular strike. It's unfortunate you're already almost dead. Uh, we are going to stun actually you. Give me rabies. Such yeah? A terrible assault yeah? Will not be left unanswered. No, okay. Heckling gunshot. Just gonna pull and debuff. Got pulled the pull. I did not land the debuff, oddly enough. Um, not that it's gonna help. Eradicated. Hey, I got bleed on the only living one. Have fun.
Let's fucking go. That's a lot of healing. Uh, this is probably gonna kill. No, I want to show off another move. Fuck it. Although I don't think a lot of them are selectable on the front rank. Just this room won't work. Here, we're gonna we're gonna see. We're gonna see. Oh, Hunter Salutation, okay. This rule attack, target must be stunned. So will this miss? Yeah. You'll notice here it says hero to hit, 0%. So my accuracy on this target, because it's not stunned, is 0. Pretty use Hunter Salutation. Activate post. See if I can lower a... Uh, See if I can lure him into hitting me. Okay. He's the wrong guy, dude. Watch this advantage. Give them no quarter. Yeah. Alright, like third battle. Purchase, I didn't change my fucking... Lifted. I didn't change my skills. Is made clear. That's okay. I mean, I'll show you six of the seven if all else fails. Get a stun, please. Thank you. Diminish. Now, I couldn't sucker them into uh, activating my repose to get that stun, but I take my word for it. It works. And uh, if you really, really buff it, it works pretty well, too. Alright. I guess the best thing I could put down is a visceral on big guy. 26, no crit. Let's get some bleed on some folks. Reeling. About to Not break. cool, bro. Not cool. Put him in the back. An ass. The horror. Only one. Oh god. I'm gonna go one rank back. Plague Doctor is not mobile, even if even if it comes to going into the back. I can use serrated knife. Precision and power. Hell yeah, I got the bleed on both of them. This is what it feels like. Continually onslaught. To be a god. Destroy them all. Six bleed is not bad for all these things stacked together. I could have inflicted more with a different move from the Hellion, but not bad. Let's um, stun you. Yeah. Blow. Well, I'm not going to be able to, uh, I wasn't going to be able to visceral from back here anyway, so we're just going to move forward, wasting our turn, more or less. Hit him with that. So much bleed. It's not even funny how much bleed that was. Confidence surges as so the enemy crumbles. Lead. Say goodbye to almost 20 HP, bro. Oh, so much bleed. Oh, all of the bleed. 29 bleed damage. Jesus. I have to let him die to that bleed. <laughs> you took this Slow grave out lying it. Unforeseen. Forgiving. All right. Well, that is all the time I really have for this video. Um, but I highly suggest you check out the Saw Hunter. He is a very, very fun class, and personally, uh, one of my recent favorites. So thank you to the mod team for putting this together. Um, anyway, I've got another Let's Play video coming out on Wednesday, and. 
and I should have another guide video coming out next Saturday as well. Uh, so stay tuned. Um, and again, just a little PSA. Uh, thank you for uh, subscribing and bringing it, the channel up to all, just short of 500. It's um, it's impressive every day, and it kind of uh, I didn't expect it. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay frosty. Coming back.